Hey guys, it's Nadia here straight from Argentina where it has been a fantastic kickoff to this week of the Cardano Constitution Convention. Got here right on the heels of Cardano's Tech Week, which was just full of amazing projects. There was a hackathon, just people here from all parts of the world. Those people are still coming in and some are leaving. It's like just so much Cardano in one space at one time. I was going to do this really highly edited, lots of different clips and cuts of different things going on video. But to be honest, there's just too much going on. It just turned 12 midnight here. And um, I just wanted to give you some perspective on everything that's happening from the ground because it is such a momentous time. So we're going to actually start the live stream conversations for the Constitution tomorrow. So there's so much coming up. I'll put the link down uh, in the description to the uh, Cardano convention and all the details you are going to want to see to be able to take part in uh, the live stream from wherever you're at. You'll be able to see the discussion, the dialogue and what's happening. You'll be able to see the most current uh, constitution and how it's been drafted. And I have to say that this process has been like very up and down and very full of really fantastic debate. If you've been in Cardano for a long time, you know, there's been a lot of decisions on the way to this decision-making process. And then this decision-making process had a lot of decisions, not to mention the like absolutely tumultuous and jam-packed uh, amount of different logistical challenges and all the things that the teams had to put together to get everyone here. So we're simultaneously taking part in uh, Nairobi in Kenya and here in Buenos Aires in Argentina because uh, there were some difficulties with the visas, unfortunately. It's part of doing big things that unplanned things happen. So um, I'm just going to give you this fantastic clip that I took tonight at the sort of welcome event that we had outside. And Charles just gave us this nice little five minute explanation of why this constitution is important. It's so cool to hear his perspective. If I could be honest with you, I shot it on my iPhone, and so it's not like the best angle and the most perfect direction, but it will be as if you stood there and heard it yourself. So that's what I was hoping to share with you. And then just the uh, encouragement to engage in the process. Uh, you too can take part in even just listening at this point. Once this constitution gets debated on over the next two days, on Friday, we're going to come to a vote about whether or not it will be ratified, and then it will come to the community to have it be your opportunity to decide on whether this becomes our uh, on-chain first step in this governance. It's been long in coming. So uh, even if you're newer to the Constitution as an idea, this uh, taking part in just this listening to this clip that I'm about to put up is going to help you come to an understanding of why we need a Constitution right out of Charles's mouth. And uh, then I just encourage you to like, turn it on in the background for the next day or two and just listen to some of the, some of the conversations because they're absolutely engaging and educational and you'll learn a lot and you'll think of things that maybe you didn't think of before. I've had my mind changed on a few things that I felt very strongly about and that's a great part of this process. So um, all of the side clips will come later sometime when I can put them all together but just for now I hope you enjoy this one and uh, I hope that you feel just uh, empowered to take part in this decentralized governance revolution that is happening on Cardano right now. We'll see you soon. 19th century America, not 21st century America. We wrote a document and had a bill of rights and we really believed in things like liberty and freedom and freedom of association and speech. We believe that these things are God given. They don't come from a government. They come from somewhere else that transcends governments, nation states. And we don't live in a world like that anymore. We don't wake up with an expectation of privacy. We don't wake up with an expectation that our voice matters, that we're in charge of our property. Try not paying your property taxes for a few months. See what happens. Take your house. Do you really own it? We don't live in a society where freedom of speech is there. You have all these people floating around saying it's too dangerous. We have to deplatform people. We don't live in a society anymore that protects basic human rights. So what crypto has always been about is a revolution of the heart and mind where we say, you know what? We should rather live in a society where people are self-sovereign. People take care of themselves, their, their own banks, they own their own ID, they own their own data, and they live in a society where they're trusted enough to be responsible with their own lives, and they just want to be left alone. Seems pretty simple, but in 2024, it's something globally that's quite difficult to build consensus around, but not here. 
And the existence of a constitution ensures that every single person who uses this system will be treated equally, no matter what language they speak, what country they're born in, no matter what political philosophy they happen to believe in, whether they value it or not value it. And unlike human derived systems, which require the constant vigilance of archolites waking up every day trying to preserve these things and care about these things, code doesn't have to do that. It never forgets, it never sleeps, and it doesn't care who we are. It treats everybody truly equally. And this is the first time in human history we've had systems like this. They're not perfect yet, they're evolving, but in 15 years I have watched the cryptocurrency movement go from a single user, a single white paper that nobody cared about, to a multi-trillion dollar industry with hundreds of millions of people across the entire world. At this rate of growth, we will have billions of users, tens of trillions of dollars of assets, and entire nation states will run on these systems within the next 15 years. And what each and every one of you in this room is doing, each and every one of you in this beautiful courtyard, is you're showing the rest of the industry how to do this with integrity, and you're showing the rest of the industry how to preserve and protect what makes crypto special. Woo! It's very easy to co-opt these systems if they're built in the wrong way. They can be centralized, they can run on Amazon, they can say they're crypto, they have an on and off switch, I won't mention it on Twitter anymore. <laughs> but we all know that there's a fiction behind these things. Just like Kindle. When I was growing up, we bought books. They're paper. You hold them in your hands. Now you have them in your digital distribution, your library. But guess what? Now somebody you've never met, you can't talk to, could wake up and say, I think that book in your library is a bit dangerous. Push a button and it just disappears as if it never existed. Back in the day, we had videos, things, home videos. You have VHS tapes. I remember them. Patrick Bateman would return them. <laughs> and you own that copy. Nobody could take the tape away from you. Now it's all digital distribution. If the video is inconvenient, they just push a button and it just disappears. All of society and life is moving in this direction. All your assets, all your interactions, your voice, your value, somebody you've never met can deplatform you and throw you away. And they don't need a subpoena. They don't need government approval. They just decide to do it like a dictator. The point of cryptocurrencies, if they're built right, is we make that world impossible. Because at the end of the day, you have to consent to it. And that's why this matters, because it touches everything. It touches your reputation. It touches your identity. It touches your voice. It touches your voting system. It touches your money. It touches your property. And ultimately, it touches your freedom of association, commerce, and expression, your ability to work with people, connect to people, and who you love. All these things are preserved and protected. That's why we're writing a constitution, because we have to have a document that eventually works its way into code, eventually is reinforced at the protocol level, where every single person never forgets that we used to live in a world where things were controlled by the few. And we return to a world where things were controlled by the many. And there's no greater example of that than this room right here. You're the many. And as testimony to that, I'm actually an observer for this event, not an elected delegate, which means I actually don't get a vote on the product that I created. It also means tomorrow when we go to the beautiful University of Buenos Aires, there's going to be sessions for voting delegates only. And as an observer, I can't even speak. How about that? The Italian guy can't speak. Oh, no. And that's how it should be, because that's how power should work. It should be of the governed, by the governed, with the consent of the governed, and the many, not the few. And it doesn't matter what a person's station of life or what they've done. There always comes a time for a changing of the guards and for a rising up of the people. And I'm not going anywhere, it's just now I'm a private citizen in this system. That's another one of the original traditional American traditions. Wasn't too long ago that it was inconceivable that people could step away from power. 
And every time they did it, it was always a big story. That's why if you go to America's capital, the Capitol Rotunda, the biggest painting they have in the very center of it is George Washington resigning his commission and stepping away from the ability to become a king. Because of that, it allowed us to be who we were and to grow as big as we are. So part of this process is figuring out the balance of power and making sure no one person has too much of it and creating a self-reflection that when we make mistakes, no one should live in fear for being able to point out those mistakes. That's so important for a vibrant democracy, for a constitutional republic with actually a direct democracy system. First time ever liquid democracy has actually been implemented at scale. It's a massive social experiment. And if we keep these principles to heart, we're going to show the rest of the world how to govern. And if we keep these principles to heart, we're going to show our industry how to do it. And over the next 15 years, as the world moves to crypto, honestly speaking, there's only going to be one choice. It's Cardano.